the queen of sheba and the fall of solomon dear friends in the previous story we saw solomon building the temple and david's preparation for it right in today's story we will see more of the life and reign of solomon who was rich in wealth and wisdom now when the queen of sheba heard of the fame of solomon she came to test him with hard questions she came to jerusalem with a very great retinue with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones and when she came to solomon she told him all that was on her mind and solomon answered all her questions there was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her and when the queen of sheba had seen all the wisdom of solomon the house that he had built the food on his table the seating of his officials and the attendance of his servants their clothing his cupbearers and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the lord there was no more breath in her she saw in person and understood that solomon's words and wisdom far exceeded the report she heard in her own country and king solomon gave to the queen of sheba all that she desired besides what was given to her by the bounty of king solomon now the weight of gold that came to solomon in one year was 666 talents besides that which came from the explorers and from merchants and from all the kings of the west and from the governors of the land and he made shields with that gold The king had a fleet of ships of Tarshish at sea with the fleet of his army. Once every 3 years the fleet of the ships of Tarshish used to come bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes and peacocks. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with finest gold. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold. None were of silver as silver was considered of little value in the days of Solomon. Thus King Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. During Solomon's time, he did not fight many battles, unlike his father David. Solomon was a peace-loving man, so to sustain the peace with the surrounding nations, Solomon made smart moves. Solomon married the daughters of the kings around him. He also built a palace for Pharaoh's daughter. Apart from Pharaoh's daughter, he also loved Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women. Solomon deliberately went against God's commandment not to marry foreign women. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Likewise, increasing wealth turned Solomon's heart away from God. During the time of Moses, he had told the Israelites what the person who was to become their king should and shouldn't do yet solomon who had more wisdom than anyone else walked away from that solomon devalued god's commandment not to acquire many wives nor acquire excessive silver and gold god had also commanded not to acquire many horses nor go to egypt to buy them but solomon's import of horses was from egypt and q and the king's traders received them from q at a price thus as solomon established his kingdom and his life and reign went on solomon his heart still guiding him with wisdom decided to please his flesh whatever his eyes desired he did not keep from them and he kept his heart from no pleasure as a result of all this solomon's heart turned away from the lord who had appeared to him twice When Solomon was old his wives turned away his heart after other gods. He went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Then he built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And so he did for all his foreign wives who made offerings and sacrificed to their gods. These acts of Solomon angered God. The Lord himself told Solomon his decision to tear the kingdom from Solomon and give it to his servant. But God also said that for the sake of David he will not tear away the kingdom, but give one tribe to Solomon's son, and that he will not tear away the kingdom during Solomon's reign, but rather from his son. 
Then the Lord raised up adversaries against Solomon. One of those adversaries was Solomon's servant, Jeroboam the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zedatha. His mother's name was Zeruah, and she was a widow. During that time that Solomon built the millow and closed up the breach in the city of David, Solomon saw that Jeroboam was very able and industrious, and he gave him charge over all the forced labor of the house of Israel. At that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him on the road. Ahijah had dressed himself in a new garment, and the two of them were alone in the open country. Then Ahijah laid hold of the garment and tore it into twelve pieces. He gave ten to Jeroboam and informed him of God's decision. He said that he would take the kingdom from Solomon and give ten tribes to him. But for the sake of David and for the sake of the city of Jerusalem, the city that God had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, Solomon will have one tribe. The Lord also said that if Jeroboam walks with God, just like David did, God would establish Jeroboam's house forever in Israel. Therefore Solomon sought to kill Jeroboam. So Jeroboam fled to Egypt and stayed there till Solomon's death. Solomon reigned over all Israel forty years. Then he rested with his fathers. He was buried in the city of David. After the death of Solomon, all Israel went to Shechem to crown Rehoboam son of Solomon king. When Jeroboam heard of this, he returned from Egypt. This sparked friction among the people of Israel. We will see what problems there were in the next story. God bless you.